Jiggy cat on a damn feeling spree. This is not good, so and you can't mimic my energy. 100 round drum and be hanging like a centipede. Hey everyone, my name is Nagato's Adventure. Hope you guys are having an awesome day for today. As the title states, I'm going to be teaching you on how to install RetroArch 1.8.4 for your soft modded PlayStation 2. And I'm going to be teaching you guys on all the prerequisites and additional information you'll need today for today's video. Um, With that being all out the way, I'm going to state just, you know, the, all the prerequisites you need. Anything that I state will be in the link in the description down below. Any useful guides, any useful links, and any tools I use in today's video, it will be all in, you know, the link in the description but with that being said of course you need a, a soft modded playstation 2 that already has free mc boot installed so whether if you have a fat ps2 with that is using free mc boot hdd method or you have a memory card or you have the slim you can use via that method um as well you need a playstation 2 memory card so that is required for today you also need U launch elf installed whether if you have U launch elf on your um free mc boot card go ahead and have that i already have U launch elf via on my uh, ps2 hdd since i'm using a ps2 fat model you also need winwar to extract out retroarch um content files as well you need you're going to be needing some roms for retroarch for its respective cores so for example um i know that the playstation 2's version of retroarch doesn't really have many cores and i'll list all of the supported cores and emulators in a little second but um for example if you have like the nes core go ahead and you know make a folder with all of your nes games and i'll show you guys on how to set this up later on in the video last but not least you need a usb stick that's formatted to fat32 and getting into the supported list of cores and emulators there's only about um i think five or six well they'll showcase on the screen right here um some just to note off the back 2048 is a core quick nes so you could play classic nintendo games so if you want to play the original mario and like balloon fight you can um pico drive so you could play classic sega genesis games so if you want to play um classic games like outrun um you know the original sonics you can't end. there's also a mgba emulator and there is another um nes emulator as well called fce umm but that being all out the way i just want to give a special thanks out to all of the retro art developers but with that being said let's go on to the pc and get this set up Alrighty guys, assuming that you did follow all the prerequisites as stated in the intro, we basically good to go to get started on the um, PC side of things before we get to our PlayStation 2 and install RetroArch successfully onto it. First things first, all we gotta do is go to the RetroArch uh, platforms page and we need to go ahead and find the build for PlayStation 2. Currently, as I'm recording this, um, it's the stable version is for 1.8.4, um, maybe in the future, maybe for higher, um, you know, builds so just want to note that out the way so make sure to always use the latest build but once it's fully done as of right now it will download onto your pc and then what you need to do is go ahead and create a folder um on your desktop you can just have this open create new and you want to label this as retroarc.elf so let me just type that in real quick retroarc underscore elf and this is where all of our elf files or cores are going to be labeled as in here. So if we go into the RetroArch elf folder, we're just going to copy and paste all of our cores that I was talking about earlier in the prerequisites into this folder. This is how um, RetroArch is going to be able to read our, you know, NES games, Sega Genesis games and MGBA games and all of that fun stuff. So. What we're going to do now is just exit out of this of course you need one more to you know view these files as well but once you have your files extracted um you have your cores into one folder what we're going to do is talk about the actual game so as of right now i already have a folder called roms which i do suggest you have a folder called this in all lowercase as well all you got to do is just create a new folder on windows 10 folder label it as roms and then you're basically good to go let me just delete this now but in your roms folder this is where you want to have located all your classic games so the way how i did it is just label them pretty simple you can name them like with the full name it really doesn't matter but um as showcased here i have my gba game that we're going to test super mario world we're also going to do a sega genesis game so one of my favorite outrun and we're going to do a classic nes game balloon fight one of my other favorite you know classic nes games other than mario but 
assuming that you have all your games into you know a neat directory it's labeled for whatever console or core basically you're good to go from here what we need to do is plug in a usb that is formatted to fat32 so let's go into my usb right here it has nothing on it we need to make sure that our usb is formatted to fat32 so if you go into properties if your things are already fat32 you're good to go and you can just drag and drop your files over but let's say your thing is on ntfs or xfat where it says files System, we basically need to reformat our drive since the PlayStation 2 can't read other file system partitions. So what you need to do as of right now, if you have any important documents on your USB drive, make sure to back them up or make sure to, uh, you know, just keep them in a safe place. Or if it's a new USB drive and you don't care about it, um, then you could just follow along because anytime you reformat your USB, I can't stress this enough, you'll lose all your data since um, reformatting, um, you know, another file system basically erases your drive clean. So hopefully you guys understand what I just said. What we need to do is go into format right here make sure you choose the highest capacity for your usb if uh, your things on ntfs or xfat just go to fat32 your allocation unit size you can do a default volume label you can label it anything you can even have it labeled as ps2 if you want if you want this you know your designated usb drive for this um i just i'm gonna label it usb make sure your quick format is on hit start and this is just the same warning I was giving y'all guys. So formatting will erase all data on your USB drive or disk. Uh, to format the disk, just click OK. And to quit, just hit cancel. So hit OK once you accept the terms of service. Once it's fully done, what will happen is um, you'll get a little notification right now saying format complete. Just hit OK. And now if we go back into our um, USB drive, right click over it go into properties you can see that your thing is on fat 32 so that's one thing i do want to share as of right now so we're good to go uh if we open back up our file explorer and we go to our usb drive we already know that it's formatted to fat 32 all we got to do is take our retroarch elf our roms and just put it to the root of the usb it's that simple it's just dragging and dropping um, depending on how many games you're doing, it may take a while, but since I only literally had one game for each core, it won't take a long. So what we need to do now is go to this right here, go to, uh, where it says safely remove hardware and eject media. We want to go ahead and safely eject our USB where we put our retro our games and our um, PS2 cores at. And then what we're going to do is go to the PlayStation 2 and get this, um, fully safely ejected. So I'll meet you guys for that process. Alrighty guys, so as showcased here, we're basically back onto the PlayStation 2. As of right now, your USB should be in your PlayStation 2 console. As well, you have your free MacBook memory card and you have your controller set up. I'll probably have like a little picture just to, you know, reiterate what I'm stating right now in terms of how your PS2 should look. Um, but what we need to do as of right now is to boot and to you launch elf yours may not say you launch elf acd yours may say um you launch elf or something else but since i have my playstation 2 soft modded via with a um hard drive in it that's what it says so just go ahead and launch you launch elf and i'm sorry if you do hear my playstation 2's fan um i don't know why all ps2 do this after like when you try to soft mod it so the fan gets loud but um once you're into you launch elf um, what we need to do is go into our file browser. So just go and hit X via here. We want to go to mass. Mass is basically our USB and you can see our RetroArch elf file or basically our folder and we can see our ROM. So what we need to do is go ahead and to RetroArch elf, hit X over it. And then from here, this is where our cores are located at it's pretty simple on how to load so for example if you want to play a classic super Ni or not super nintendo uh, original nes game you have two options you can either use quick nes or you can use fceumm.elf i'm just going to use quick nes so just for tutorial purposes here and then um this is not no like special retro arc gui or anything like that it won't have anything fancy like the ps3 has or the pc this is like the bare bones um you know retro arc and that's to be expected since the playstation 2 is a pretty old console but yeah this is like the same menu i think the playstation portable has but here's the um actual uh you know gui of retro arc it's very simple but it's easy to direct to 
what we want to do since we already selected our core we want to go into load content so you need to hit circle on your playstation 2 like if you were playing the japanese game and what we want to do is go into mass we want to go into roms and then since we selected nes we're going to go ahead and play our nes game hit circle through that and it's going to load our suggested cores and then once everything is said and done we basically be able to play balloon fight so here's balloon fight playing on my playstation 2 the only downside with retroarch and if you guys could really help me with this version i do not know how to pause and basically switch to other or excuse me games or is it like back out of this so you do have to i think i'm not too sure about this basically we you know manually get up from your chair or whatever and reset your playstation 2 which is kind of a bummer but let's say if you were playing a game for a long time it would it really wouldn't matter but you know it's not like the nintendo switch vita ps4 ps3 where you could just like pause in game so if there's some like button combination please let me know i will make sure to pin that comment in the comment section down below but what I'm going to do here is just uh, showcase, uh, you know, the MGBA games running as well as Sega Genesis games running as well. So I'll meet you guys um, once I have my PlayStation 2 fully restarted and, you know, good to go on that side of things. Alrighty, so we're back onto the PlayStation 2 once again. This is just an example. I'm just giving you once, um, one more time, so you guys could, you know, understand on how to do this. Uh, just speeding through it. File browser, mass, uh, retroarch elf. Let's go ahead and try a MGBA game. So a classic Game Boy Advance game. We're going to be trying to run Super Mario, uh, you know, Advance, Super Mario World Advance, I should say, and then. I'm going to just showcase that, uh, you know, another game will run, but probably without any commentary. But what we're going to do is just wait for the actual color, or excuse me, core to load up on the screen. So here's RetroArch once again. Go to load content by hitting circle, mass, uh, RetroArch, or excuse me, not RetroArch, ROMs, uh, GBA, since I put all my games in here. Here's Super Mario World. It will suggest the um, MGBA core for you, so you don't have to, like, research it once again but uh once the game has you know successfully booted up onto the screen then we're basically good to go so here is a game boy advance game running on my playstation 2 off of usb so it's actually the japanese version i didn't even know i had that but yeah here's the game running actually it seems like the game is kind of lagging a little bit so maybe gba games are not you know there's probably a setting i could probably change in here yeah so if you probably hear the audio it's not really good but what i'm going to do i know Sega genesis games for a fact um run pretty well but i'm going to show you guys on how to um you know you know install Sega genesis games in the next segment of this video Alrighty guys, so we're back into um, RetroArch once again. I am loading up the Pico Drive core. So all we gotta do is just go into load content, hit circle, and then let's go into mass, ROMs, Se oh, not this one, Sega Genesis, and we're gonna try out um, OutRun. Yeah, I'm not too sure why um, that game ran pretty bad on GBA stuff. So if you guys know any settings or it's just the actual emulator, let me know in the comment section down below. I'll probably once I edit out this video, um, I'll look more into it and probably have some fixes for you guys. But a showcase here, here's OutRun running on the PlayStation 2 just fine. So yeah, it seems like NES games and Sega Genesis games run pretty much fine. I really didn't experience any issues in terms of like any graphical or audio issues, but it could have just been that ROM I chose. But let me know in the comment section down below um, if you guys did enjoy this video. With that being said, my name is Nagato and I'm signing out. Thank you guys for watching and I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace. 
Hey everyone, it's me Nagato's Adventure. Hope you guys did enjoy today's video. With that being out the way as well, I highly do recommend that y'all guys go ahead and follow my social media so you never miss any of the latest hacking guides and tutorials on my channel by subscribing to me and hitting that notification button as well. It's another method on how you will know when I drop my latest content, whether it be for the Vita, PS4, PS3, and such and so forth. As well, if you want to be in a mix of things and you want to join my official community, you can join via the link right now showcased on the screen and join my discord that way and if you do want to support my channel in any shape or form you can become a patron i will have a card right now but with all of that getting out the way hope you guys really did enjoy this video and i'll see y'all next time peace